March 8th, Ooh, Twin Birds LLC was rated Ooh, high. Many cars? And they rolled in 10 deep at 6 a.m. Hey guys, loud guys. Today we are going to watch ATF raids and like what happens in an ATF raid. And so ATF is normally called the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. So they have a lot of things to do. Like normally you have a drug control team that is different and they are different, but they control everything. Totally combined. Uh, all the explosive things, they control it. So let's see what they do and what is an ATF raid. Breaking news, an ATF agent experiences chafing, one homeowner has been shot multiple times, one ATF agent is injured, all of this after a 6 a.m. no-knock raid. I've got several concerns about this no-knock raid, no -knock raid, and I will discuss them after the news clip. My heart was racing and the dogs were barking. The executive director of the Little Rock Airport is in the hospital tonight after his home was raided by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives this morning. Thanks for joining us tonight at 6. I'm Laura Monteverdi. Well, good evening. I'm Bob Clawson. According to state police and the ATF, Brian Malinowski was being served a federal search warrant when he shot at ATF agents and they returned fire. Neil Zarang oh. is live at Durant's court where he has been he all day. Them? This started, Neil, around 6 o'clock this morning. What else have you learned? since then. But I think that's, that's illegal. That shooting is illegal. Well, ATF agents are still here 12 hours later, and we've been told that one ATF agent was injured in that shooting with non-life-threatening injuries, oh, and God. the director of the Little Rock Airport, well, he was shot at least twice because state police say he suffered gunshot wounds. We don't know how many more times than twice, or if it was just two times, we do know that both of those people were sent to local hospitals and they may still be there from what last we were told. Oh. I'm just really curious as to what was going on a few houses down. Neighbors in the dark as ATF arrived at 4 Durant Court Tuesday morning. It was around 6 a.m. their operation to serve a federal search warrant went sideways. I heard about five or six like loud bangs. I oh, woke oh, up to the gunfire and witnessed an ambulance, money. fire truck, and multiple law enforcement agencies swarm the street. Even with an explanation given by authorities that homeowner and Clinton National Airport Executive Director Brian Malinowski shot toward ATF agents first and they returned fire, injuring both sides, she has questions. I talked to other neighbors and all of us are just kind of confused. An investigation is ongoing into whether the use of deadly force was justified. Our station contacted the U.S. Attorney's Who Office for the first? Eastern District of Arkansas to try and obtain a copy of the warrant to learn what it was for, but we were told we could not see it. Laroque Fire Department just left the scene. We saw them approaching the home with circular saws, jaws of life, crowbars, and other things that they use to cut metal and we asked the fire department what it is that they were cutting. They didn't tell us, but over the past couple hours, uh, neighbors and us, we've been able to sort of peer through the little police uh, vehicles that we have been. We saw some loose guns as well as multiple totes uh, going into a trailer. So that's what we know right now from the scene. But of course, as we learn more, we'll be updating you on air and online at caracay.com. Reporting live in Little Rock, Niels Ray, back to you in studio. So now I have several concerns about Same. this. This is the second raid that we've heard of in as many as 12 days. March 8th, oh, Twin Brothers raid? LLC was raided oh, by the and they rolled in 10 deep at 6 a.m. It sounds a little bit familiar, yes. but now what happened, you know, this homeowner, he probably did not know who was coming through his door and I can absolutely relate because last night I had wonderful sleep and no, I didn't sleep at a Holiday Inn Express. I slept in my house. So now my buddy is a third shifter. He had sent me this little news story and linked it to me in a message. And so a little bit after 6 a.m. when I woke up, I was still in a little bit of a groggy. I was in a haze from having such good sleep. That sleep just would not go away. So I'm sitting here reading this. I'm having to, you know, kind of squint my eyes and I'm watching and things are a little blurry because I hadn't quite woke up yet. So had that been me, if someone had come through my door, say the ATF doing a no-knock raid at 6 a.m., 
I still would have been in this kind of a, a state, right? Uh. Like I wouldn't be thinking rationally. I wouldn't be seeing things clearly. All I would know is that somebody's breaking down my door. Yes, and of there course. is a potential of me sending lead, not knowing if it is a, an intruder or what. Mm. You know, basically in my state, I do have castle doctrine, but they have to cross the threshold of the door. And if they breach that door and start coming through that door in the dark, which, you know, I sleep with the lights out in my house, so I would not be able to identify them. So it would be me catching the bl the bullets like the, the homeowner did. You know, the ATF effectively turned him into a meat target this morning. Yes. So now the fellow that has multiple gunshot wounds with an S, that's minimum of two. The fellow that has gunshot wounds with an S is an airport executive and he's been in that business for 30 years. Oh. Now some people have positions in business and they really do not need to be there, but I'm not going to assume that this guy is one of those. I'm going to say that this guy, with him being in the airport business for 30 years, you could probably communicate with him. He's probably able yeah. to make words and yes. hear words and communicate. So instead of the ATF going and beating on his door at 6 a.m., why in the world didn't they just go catch him at work during the middle of the day, you know, do it nice and politely, be like, hello, sir, we're outside. Yes, we and I completely more. agree to this because, like, if somebody comes to your house, then what do you do? You normally try to hit them. No, at night, you will always think that it's a thief. Definitely. Or a robber or somebody else. You, mm. you will not be like, okay, somebody's coming, you will smile at them you'll we'll talk to them and but that the person who's coming inside the house that has to intro uh, himself now that i'm this and that no you cannot give an introduction at 6 a.m no they are police there is a atf raid huh. so in raid what happens is they just break into the door and they're like where are you but still i've seen like they used to see show their id cards and sort of no no they if they wanted to do that then he was saying the same thing that they could have come in the noon they could have gone to the office they could have done huh. the same things but what they did was they they were that is a raid in raid what they do is they catch you when, when you are not aware not aware huh? uh, so they want you to do that sleep. but it's very bad because of course anybody will think that they are robbers and they'll try to hit him hmm. search your home we'd like for you to come with us then simply enough he wouldn't have opportunity to get rid of anything they could walk him into the house Hey, we're here to find this. Can you show us this? Yeah. So rather than ruining his safe and putting bullet holes in his walls, the lady that was out on the street said she heard five or six rounds. So oh. if those bullets that hit him didn't stop in him or the agent that got hit, mm -hmm. now he has bullet holes in his house. Mm -hmm. He's had people raffling through his stuff. He's had firefighters in there ruining his safe. It stated that, you know, oh. the firefighters had shown up with the jaws of life and a big, oh. uh, what was that name of that bar, a Hanlon bar or something like that. I'm not sure, I'm, I'm not familiar. But rather than cutting his safe up and messing his junk up, and scratching his guns, they probably could have gone about this a whole different way. Yeah. This airport executive, he probably would prefer not to be laying in the hospital in pain right now. Mm -hmm. He probably would have preferred the communicate with me way. He looks like a fella that you might be able to communicate a little bit with. Yes. So how about you? Think about it. Set your alarm clock for 6 a.m. and wake up. And think, can I actually jump up, spin on my heels, identify what this intruder is? Whether it's a crackhead or the intruder in this case is an ATF. How cognitive are you? Can you figure out if it's a good shoot, bad shoot? Are you going to wind up catching multiple gunshot wounds just like this fella did? I'm sure that this guy is laying in the hospital really not enjoying himself. Of the course. ATF, well, lots of law enforcement really will kill you over even the most remedial thing. Oh. In this case, it was probably a piece of metal yeah. because it was the ATF and they say that the fire department was there. We're going to assume it's guns because even the news reporter said that he thinks he saw guns. So they will kill you over a piece of metal and hit you at your worst hour. So what do you guys think about that? I think it's an absolute daggum mess. Now this airport executive is laying in the hospital. He's probably risking his livelihood right now because, hmm. you know, quite frankly, just for public face, a lot of those officials, once you're stained, so to speak, wow. those officials will kind of have to back off and lose their job or get moved off somewhere else or something to that effect. Hmm. So this fellow's livelihood is now affected Actually. over a piece of metal. You know, 
if he hit if he got hit in a bone or in a joint or something like Blood that, that knife. could wind up being arthritis for life. Yeah. It could be something that affects him and afflicts him for the rest of his life. We completely agree to him only because like actually if they raid like this and at six AM then he he has all the right to protect himself. He cannot just sit there and wait for them to do and like even now he's shot, like what has happened to him? This is a very, very serious this case. This is a very bad way and I have one question that do they have that confirmation that he is into some things or they just have randomly like put the raid in his house? That is why they put the raider, they have some suspicion. Oh. So they raid to get him caught red handed. Oh, so, but he's right. saying, right, that you could have taken him to that place and no, you said, you can just ask the open the safe. If, if he's not opening, then and you can also, do it. also, like, what I said, he said that he was an airport executive, but I feel that if a human is capable of communicating, that whoever it is first communicate with him, like, where he's gonna run, because you have got, you know, the whole army is there to mm. catch him. You can just communicate that there's no reason to just fire the bullets in his walls and all such things. This was very bad behavior, I guess. Yes. They could communicate and if he's not listening and not answering, then they could just, uh, like, make him fear or something. Then they can do that. But this was very bad way. Hmm. So what do you guys think about it? Do let us know in the comment section below. So do like, share and subscribe. Bye. Bye.